know, this is a story that we have been uh, researching and following as the as the blogs have picked up on it, and developments continue. The Department of Homeland Security buying ammunition, now looking to purchase another 21 million rounds of ammunition. This in addition, of course, to the 1.6 billion rounds that Homeland Security has bought in just the past 10 months. It is a pleasure to be here today as the President signs the 2010 National Defense Authorization Act. You know, as Commander-in-Chief, uh, I will always do whatever it takes to keep the American people safe, to defend this nation. Uh, and that's why this bill provides for the best military in the history of the world. Today I'm pleased to say that we have proved that change is possible. It may not come quickly or all at once, but if you push hard enough, it does come eventually. You're saying kill us are okay? Kill the enemy? Absolutely. How do you know they're the enemy without a trial, without finding out they're guilty? We do know. We, our CIA does it. We do it because, listen, you know what his 16-year-old son was murdered. He was an American Al citizen. He should have been killed if his kid was with him. That's the brakes. Do you think that the killing of Anwar Alaki's 16-year-old son, who is an American citizen, is justifiable? Uh, I, 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 I'm not going to get into Anwar Alaki's son. I know that Anwar Alaki um, renounced his citizenship. His son was still an American citizen. Did great harm to uh, people in this country. Uh, and was a regional Al-Qaeda commander hoping to inflict harm uh, and destruction uh, on people that share his religion uh, and others in this country. And, that's an American uh, citizen that's being targeted without due process of law, without okay. trial, and he's underage, he's a uh, minor. I, I, I would suggest that you uh, should have a far more responsible father if they're uh, truly concerned about the well-being of their children. But we can't help but wonder why the Department of Homeland Security should need more than 20 times as much ammunition as it took to fight the Iraq war. You've made some very interesting connections with some high-level uh, intelligence people, um, and you were recently contacted by one. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and what this person had to say. Well, this was a bit of a surprise because this wasn't the normal phone call in, in the wee hours because they always mess up the time. Um, this was a call from America. and. Uh, it was a, senior, uh, a retired uh, senior officer uh, in the U.S. military who was quite upset that uh, something was being done to his, his people. And uh, he wanted to know if I would help him get the word out. Basically, the, um, the military officers were being uh, asked, and he called it a litmus test himself, that isn't my words, um, a litmus test, uh, um, a way of finding out, do you fall on one side of the agenda or do you fall on the other side? Are you loyal to the Constitution? Uh, and the uh, rights, the Bill of Rights, the original intent of the founders and their writings. Are you, are you there? Do you fall in that camp or do you follow, fall into the camp of uh, loyalty, fealty, abeyance to Mr. Obama? And so that was the question being asked. If in a scenario where you were uh, asked to uh, confiscate guns and the public, in spite of their Second Amendment rights to hold and have uh, armament, um, if they were refusing and you received an order as high up as the president, uh, the commander in chief of the armed forces, um, to take those arms and they were refusing. If the next order was to fire on American citizens, would you do it? That's the litmus test. Would you do it? And why do you think the question is being posed? It, it appears they're getting their ducks in line and preparing for something. Um, what, what do you think is the point of all this? You mean the body bags and the shells? <laughs> you mean the, the preparation for internal war? Uh, yeah, tell us about the, the fact that they, the, the American government is just, the military has purchased, I believe it's 1.7 billion hollow point mm -hmm. rounds. Um, does that tie into this? Absolutely. Well, it, that shouldn't shock anyone. That 1.6, 1.7 billion rounds is merely to keep up with the population that have purchased the same number. I think the shock has been uh, for Obama and crew is that the American public would react the way they have um, given some of the moves that he's made and I mean they've tracked you know they actually when things happen so if he's done a presidential executive order at this point in time and uh, the reaction has been that people have gone out en masse and bought you know a million new guns that next week um, he, he realizes that he's to blame for what's happened what he didn't think was that it would continue 
that every time there was a new executive order, every time that there was something that caused fear out there about the loss of freedom or liberty on the part of Americans, their reaction was to go buy more guns. Uh, go buy more guns, so there's armament, there's armor, and then there's provisioning. And so you've got this whole movement that has just gone crazy of people provisioning for uh, an eventuality. Uh, when you see the government buying enough body bags to basically deal with half the population, um, you got to say, wait a minute, what's this about? Enough uh, shells to deal with the population, you know, 10 times, uh, 10 shots per person. Um, you got to say, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? The Founding Fathers set it up uh, well, knowing full well what had happened with the British moving in, taking over your homes, taking over your beds, and sleeping with your wives. I mean, let's not forget you know, the extent to which it went. Under law, all of it legal. The litmus test that this gentleman referenced uh, and asked me to share uh, is a very real thing. Uh, will you, in fact, shoot Americans if they won't give you your guns? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the question being asked at the highest level of military. And that, that question, of course, will be descending in ranks. And the phone-in shows, we've had 40 American military officers, officers phone in and say that, in fact, yes, the litmus test is taking place. Either we've been directly witness to it and have been asked the question ourselves, or we've heard from others just slightly above us in rank who've said, you won't believe what they're asking. Considering we're so integrated with the American uh, military forces and Canadian authorities are beginning to become more and more integrated with the Americans. How do you think this might affect Canadians should some type of martial law type scenario happen in the States? Well, I think you know that we'll be drawn in by virtue of treaty, by virtue of agreement, and whether it's a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, handshake by the good fellas, uh, you know, Mr. Harper and Mr. Obama, there is an implication there for involvement one with the other. Uh, you mentioned martial law. Well, there, there's already an agreement in place that says if martial law is declared in one country, that the other country can be asked to send their troops into that country. How far does this go? Does there need to be an invitation? Or if martial law is, is uh, declared in one country, are you in fact then able to move into the other country with troops without an invitation? How far does this go? In your opinion, is in their minds are the people who may be of interest to fire upon. Yeah, well, they've identified Christians, they've identified troops coming back uh, as, you know, from, from the different wars. And of course, I have to say this, they're, they're accurate in that, um, because it has to do with loyalties. Where do the loyalties lie? Uh, Christians, the loyalty lies to God. Um, troops coming back, they actually believe in the Constitution, they believe in the nation as a whole. They don't believe in dictatorship. Uh, they fought against that kind of stuff. So. Um, they're coming back with a different foci, and they're also uh, with a different loyalty base. Yeah, it's a changing of the guard, it's uh, doing away with the old loyalties and bringing in the young kids who don't have those loyalties. They are now being given new loyalties and taught how to, how to uh, bow the knee. Obama was smart to say that returning military could be labeled as terrorists. Because of all the people who have the skills, have the organizational ability, and have the inclination uh, to protect the country. Uh, those are the very people who would be the first ones to undo everything that, that Obama's doing. It's for real. It's so real for my, to my mind that I've heard enough authority, enough people with sufficient authority, including former governors, senators, military people, admiral, general level, those people, they're all preparing. We are in pre precarious days. Um, sovereignty means nothing to him. When you see the moves of Obama and you really understand what he's done, he is a criminal in the White House. So if that's the case, how far do criminals go to win? All the way.